Welcome back, Splunk Enthusiasts. This video is brought to you by Lame Creations, Log Analysis Made Easy, where we help you master the tools and techniques to become a Splunk Pro. Are you drowning in alerts? Unsure which threats to prioritize? Do you want to see the bigger picture of how each alert contributes to your cybersecurity defense? If you're nodding, then you can't miss our latest video. In this eye-opening tutorial, we dive dive into how you can transform your Splunk alerts into strategic insights by mapping them directly to MITRE attack techniques, tactics, and procedures, or any other threat intelligence framework. Why watch this video? We're gonna give a hands-on demonstration. Follow along with our step-by-step -step guide from ingesting alerts to mapping them to TTPs. We'll also give you a bonus of how to use an auto lookup to make this a lot easier on yourself. Whether you're a seasoned security analyst or just starting to harness the power of Splunk for cybersecurity, this video is your key to transforming data into defense. Don't let another alert go unnoticed or misunderstood. Watch now, map your alert, and take control of your security landscape like never before. We covered a lot in that intro video, but it's really quite simple. I'm going to use the MITRE TTPs, but you can map them to the CIS, to NIST, however you wanna map your controls. The important part is that you start to put some context to your alerts so that you can get a more contextual view. So I could take any old alert, but for you to be able to follow along here, we're gonna actually make our own alert because I want it to fire off. The problem with mapping alerts in a video like this is I actually have to have alerts to make them be mapped. So if we use the trusty make results, I'm going to force an alert into my system and then we can use it to map. This allows you so that no matter what you're doing, you should be able to make this work. So I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna use make results. We're gonna do eval source IP equals 10. And that's, that's it. I just need to put quotes in the right place. And now I have a simple alert. There isn't any real context. I sure hope your alerts have more context than this, but it allows us to have data to start working with. So we've got this time dust IP source IP. So let's go ahead and we're just gonna put this in as a collect command, index equals summary source equals, and we're gonna do it to my TTP, my demo TTP. This is gonna create an index of summary. Well, we already have the index, and then it's gonna write that data to my demo.ttp. So we'll go ahead and run that. And now if I just run this command, I have that data back here. Perfect, that's the first step. I've made myself my alert, that concept that you have, you have saved searches, whatever, and they're generating you logs telling you that you have an alert. That's stage one. Now we need to build a lookup to add to this. So we'll come in here and we'll go to lookup file editor, open link in new tab. Maybe you've got them already there, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create my own new lookup. I'm gonna keep it really simple, CSV lookups. And we're gonna call this MITRE mapping, lame MITRE mapping, that CSV. And so we're gonna come in here and we're going to, I'll leave it in search and reporting, and I'm gonna put my first column. The most important piece you have is the ability to tie your lookup to your data in the logs. And so I'm gonna call this my alert name. I'm gonna keep it all lowercase to keep this simple. And in this situation, what do I have that identifies this as an alert? Well, it's, it's the source. All my alerts that are for this are gonna have this source called my demo TTP. You might have in your logs a field called alert name, or there might be something else but you're gonna tag it based off what it's doing. 
If I build another save search and my save search looks for really long connections, then I'm gonna write that to a log. I'm gonna give it a source name and I'm gonna call it really long connections. I could, when I was doing my make results, put a field in there. So when you're doing your alerts, you could put a field that you're gonna tag on, but the key is you find something that you can map on. In this situation, I'm gonna use the source. You know, just to do this, let's have two of these. And I'm gonna put another alert in here. Three going to four. And I come back here. I know I have two alerts, but they both have the exact same source. So this is a really good value to tie into a lookup editor. This little lookup. So I'm gonna put that as my demo TTP. Now I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna rename this field and maybe I'll call this TTP. T1039. I don't know what T uh, miter technique. I could go look this up, but honestly, it doesn't really matter. I can go in here. Now I can just go grab additional information. Let's go and we're going to call this the name of TTP. Blame amazing TTP detector. I can just fill in these fields to add this metadata in there. That's all I'm going to do. That's all these fields are doing. The important piece is what field, what am I using in my normal logs to map to? And then I just give it enrichment data, metadata. That's the whole purpose of a lookup. The primary purpose of a lookup is to provide additional metadata. And so you just fill this out. You could actually download all the MITRE techniques from MITRE and then put them in and then put an alert name that maps to them. I mean, there's so many things you could do or manually write them in, whatever it, whatever it takes. This for the demo purposes, I, w I am planning on doing a full encompassing video, multi, it'll probably be multi hours to talking about how to build these kind of detections and laying these, lay down these frameworks. But for now, the simple purpose is keep it simple. We just need to tie it to an alert name. We hit this save lookup. And we're good to go. And so I can duplicate this table. And I'm going to put my lookup in here. Just to make sure it works. Input lookup. That's the name of my lookup. Now I put that CSV. There it is. Technically, I probably should erase fields D, E, and F. Doesn't matter. Not for this demo. All right. So now we just need to know how to use lookups. The command lookup. We grab its name.csv and then we use alert name, which is the field here. And what are we mapping as? As source. This piece here is to map your fields together. What field in my lookup maps to the field in my index, my, my, my ingested logs? And then we put output. What fields do I want? Well, I want this TTP. Let's take the name of TTP as well. So we're gonna output TTP and name of TTP. Let's grab that this way because I didn't write it very easy. Oh, that didn't work. Okay, name of TTP. That works. But if we notice here, we've got the fields. There's the name of TTP and TTP. So we could just call this out. We can go source IP, dest IP, source, alert name. There won't be an alert name. TTP name of TTP. Alert name doesn't exist because it's the name that the, the lookup uses. There we go. Now I have this thing with a MITRE TTP number in there. I could put some extra data. There's another, there's some really cool mapping 
graphics that you can use. You can use some queries. You can start putting these things together and visualize your alerts as they come through. But that's gonna be in a different video. Uh, for this, we wanna just keep it simple. I've got my, I made my alert. I've now enriched that alert with a lookup. We're gonna use an auto lookup because there are some applications like the attack range that Splunk has built. They have a whole bunch of really cool dashboards for you, but they need you to, you need to have that data automatically tagged correctly. And so you, if you wanna still be using 100% their SPL code, you'll need to have it automatically added. Otherwise you have to modify their SPL code. If it doesn't make sense what I'm saying, don't worry about it. Just here's a way that we can turn this into an automatic lookup so that every time we say index equals summary source, we get this MITRE stuff. So we're gonna, we've got our lookup editor here. We're just gonna come in here and we're gonna go settings, lookups. And I kind of just go down the list. In order to make this work, you have to make a lookup table file. We already did that. Then you make the definition and then you do the automatic lookup. So we need to do a definition. So we'll hit add new, leave it in search, and we're gonna call it, I like to keep them the exact same name. Keeps it really simple for me to keep track of. What's, it's gonna be file base and what's the lookup? It's that. Wow, I'm not copying and pasting anything here. There we go, we should be finding lame miter techniques. So we're mapping, this CSV and we're making a definition. That's what it's really doing is it's making the collections and stuff behind the scenes that Splunk needs so it can use it later. We're good, um, save. And then we moved, let's make sure it's mobile. Permissions, global. Did not mean to put this in its own window, but whatever. All right, we're good there. We can see it's global, we're good. So we move down the next step, lookups, auto lookups. We're gonna add a new. I like to do two, and then I'll go grab the source, my demo TTP. I'm just trying to make it something that's easy to read. So when I look at it, I have an idea what it's doing. What's the lookup table? It's gonna be that lame. Lame miter mapping. Notice this time it doesn't have the CSV because when you do this lookup table, it's gotta be the lookup definition, not the lookup CSV. That's why we have to do the lookup definition so it shows up here. Lame miter mapping. I could do it on a source type, but I'm gonna do it on a source. And it's named my demo TTP. And then this will be alert name. And this over here should be source. Just like we built the query. And then what fields do I want to output? I want TTP. I could rename it here if I want to. I'm good with the name it's at, and name a TTP. I'm gonna hit save. And then we go, make sure that's global. And if we did this right, if we give it enough time, I'm gonna pause the video because you never give enough time and just how long it takes me to set it up. It should propagate through when we come over here and write our query, it should just work. So I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna come back in about five minutes and make sure it works. All right, I've come back. I'm gonna duplicate this tab to make sure if I run this, take the lookup out, I should still get values back. And I do. The auto lookup works. So now anytime, even though these fields, TTP, name of TTP, are not part of the actual index data, every time I run those queries, they'll be added. Doing this would allow me to fit into 
applications and other stuff that have a set SPL and you don't want to modify it. So there's reasons to do it. I'm not a huge fan of auto lookups. Let me give you a reason. It's going to do this overhead of merging these fields on every time you run verbose mode. And it's just, the concept is it's running it. If Even if you're not gonna use these fields, there's a chance it'll actually go run that auto lookup. So from a performance perspective, it's not the most efficient. It's actually better to call it on demand, but it's not gonna kill you, especially something like this. It's not that large. You have a large lookup file with thousands of results. I'm not a big fan of the auto lookup there, but it's got its place. Thanks for tuning in to Lame Creations, Log Analysis Made Easy. If you found today's video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss out on the latest tips, tools, and tutorials to boost your log analysis skills. Want to take it a step further? Become a member to support the channel and gain exclusive early access to videos and exclusive focus training. Join us on Discord where we dive even deeper, share insights, and tackle questions together. Until next time from Lame Creations, where we help you go from being a lame analyst to a Splunk Ninja.